Good morning. My name is David Lepofsky. I'm the chair of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act Alliance. We are a nonpartisan, voluntary coalition of people with disabilities and people without disabilities who have united to ensure a barrier-free province for over 1.7 million Ontarians who now have a disability and all those who will get one in the future. We've called this press conference today to unveil the election commitments that we have received from the political parties on the issue of what they will do uh, to make Ontario fully accessible for all people with disabilities if they are elected in the election to take place uh, some weeks from now. Our coalition, or its predecessor, the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee, has been involved in advocating on accessibility since as far back as 1994, and we have been involved in soliciting uh, election commitments over now five election campaigns, including this one. And in each of the elections, uh, from 1995, 1999, uh, 2003, 2007, and this one, we've had commitments from at least uh, two, if not more, uh, of the major political parties. Uh, this issue of accessibility touches the lives of everyone. Ontario has, we estimate, at least a million voters with disabilities. That is a voting block that cannot be uh, ignored or left uh, behind by anyone seeking public office. Uh, we also know that disability ultimately touches everyone's life, because everyone either has a disability now or has, a dis has someone near and dear to them who has a disability, like a family member, or will get a disability at some point in their life if they live long enough, because the most common cause of disability uh, is aging. What's the problem we've sought election commitments uh, to address? People with disabilities, whether a physical disability, like needing to use a wheelchair, or a, sens a sensory disability, like deafness, or in my case, uh, blindness, or a mental or learning or intellectual disability, we face too many barriers uh, in our everyday life. They could be physical barriers, like not being able to get into a, uh, a public building uh, where important public services are provided or goods are sold. Uh, those barriers could be uh, technological barriers, like inaccessible websites or electronic kiosks. Um, or those barriers can be uh, communication barriers, like the lack of sign language interpreter uh, services when dealing with important public services. There are many different kinds of barriers we face. Those barriers are illegal and have been since 1982. The Human Rights Code and the Charter of Rights makes them illegal except where removing or preventing them uh, would cause an undue hardship. The problem is, to enforce those rights, we've had to sue one barrier at a time. As just one example, I had to sue the Toronto Transit Commission personally under the Human Rights Code to get them to announce all bus, uh, pardon me, subway stops so that I didn't, I'd know what stop I was at. I won that case in 2005. I then had to sue them again to get them to take that same principle, the duty to announce all stops, and to apply it to their buses and streetcars. I won that case in 2007. And on winning those two cases, not all Ontario uh, public transit authorities were prepared to fall in line and obey those rulings. So we need, I've needed a new law to achieve full accessibility without us having to sue uh, one barrier at a time. We've known from the outset that full accessibility takes time, can't be achieved overnight, but we, needed, we knew we needed the backing of a strong, effective law to get us there. Our coalition, or its predecessor, I should say, the, our predecessor coalition, fought vigorously and tenaciously for 10 years, from late 1994 until 2005, to win the enactment of the law we sought. It's called the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. The McGuinty Liberals are to be commended for developing it in consultation with us, and for enacting it. And the two opposition parties, the NDP and the uh, Conservatives, are to be commended for unanim unanimously supporting that legislation uh, when it passed in the legislature in May of, uh, of 2005. We're here today 
because we need effective and strong commitments to ensure that that law gets effectively uh, implemented and enforced. That law requires Ontario to become fully accessible by 2025. That was 20 years after the day the law was passed and is under 14 years from now. Well, how are we doing so far? Under the past, uh, uh, over the past six years since the law was passed, uh, to the credit of the McGuinty government, we are nonpartisan. We give credit where it's due and criticism where warranted. To the credit of the McGuinty government, they've taken a number of important steps uh, to implement that legislation. Two accessibility standards have been passed, a relatively weak customer service accessibility standard, and this past June, a more substantial and helpful uh, accessibility standard to address barriers in public transportation, in access to information and communication, and in access to employment. However, while progress has been made, there is still a great deal to be done. Don't take my word for it. In 2009, under the Disabilities Act, the government was required to appoint an independent review to see how we're doing, whether we're on schedule, and what more needs to be done. That review was conducted by Mr. Charles Beer. Mr. Beer's report rendered uh, to the government a year and a half ago and made public a year ago in May, basically found that the government needs to revitalize and substantially strengthen its implementation of the Disabilities Act if we are to reach full accessibility by 2025. With this election approaching, we wrote the three parties on the 15th of July listing a series of detailed commitments that we believe are needed in order to achieve the goal of full accessibility, to get back on schedule for full accessibility by 2025. And we asked the parties in this election, as we have in the past four, to make commitments specifically to us. Now, we're an unusual uh, coalition because usually political parties set out their campaign pledges in their own campaign platforms. But over the past four elections and this one, their campaign pledges on this topic have been set out in letters to our coalition uh, or its predecessor. Well, what did we get? We are now making public for the first time the letters received over the past two weeks in the order received from the Liberal Party, the New Democratic Party, the Progressive Conservative Party, uh, and the Green Party, available in this room and shortly available on our website will be all four of those letters and an issue by issue breakdown of what each party committed under the 11 major areas where we sought commitments. I'll review them in just a moment. Let me begin by saying, before I get to the details of these letters, that we have had, commendably, a very good working relationship with all three parties in the legislature. That's not to say anything negative about the Green Party, they just haven't been in the legislature. But for all parties in the legislature, the government has been very good uh, since taking office in 2003 in working together with us, not always agreeing with us, but having open and candid discussions. There were two major exceptions to that in their reforms to the Human Rights Code and in their uh, changes to the Elections Act. Uh, but uh, even then, we got some progress towards the end on the Elections Act. But with those exceptions, we've had a, a very good working relationship with them, being able to share our concerns and to discuss uh, their concerns. Similarly, we've had a very good relationship with the uh, NDP um, and Conservative caucuses, being able to raise our concerns with them. We are nonpartisan and we work with everybody. And being able to ask them to raise our concerns in the legislature in areas uh, if the government wasn't acting um, as we thought they should. But let me turn now to the results. And in reviewing these, I'm calling it as it is. We are nonpartisan. We don't tell people who to vote for or who to vote against. But we do describe the commitments, I believe, accurately. accurately. Uh, in summary, of the four parties, three of them made, uh, they all committed to work together with us if elected on our concerns, which is very important to us. Uh, however, only three of the parties were prepared to make specific and detailed commitments in, in the areas, or in any of the areas uh, that we sought. The Progressive Conservative Party, as you'll see in the letter from their campaign staffer who wrote the response on behalf of their party, um, has not made any commitments 
any specific commitments to take any of the specific actions that we asked for in our July 15, 2011 letter to the parties. And that stands in very clear contrast to the Liberals, New Democrats, and Greens. As for those other three parties, I'm going to go issue by issue in a moment, but as for those other three parties, the commitments they give in the 11 areas where we sought commitments in no case reflect everything we asked for, which is hardly surprising. That's the nature of community advocacy. But frankly, in a number of areas, uh, do not uh, cover um, all of the overall concerns we raise in complete detail. But they do address all of the general themes we raise, or general topic areas we raise, and provide varying degrees of detail. So there are action on all fronts with those three parties in varying degrees uh, of detail. In short, let me summarize the areas where we sought commitments. First, having made some progress over the past years, we wanted to be sure that the next government, whoever they were, would move things forward and that there was no risk that they would move things backward, that they would cut any gains uh, that we'd made so far. So the first thing we asked of the parties was to commit that if elected, they would not cut back on legislation, regulations, or other programs uh, that are in place to affect our goals. The three uh, parties, the uh, Liberals, New Democrats, and Greens, each committed to varying degrees that they would not cut back on, uh, or in varying wording, I should say, on legislation or regulations enacted to date. The Conservatives made no commitment at all. They have not committed that if elected, they will not cut back on gains we have made. Second, we asked for specific commitments on moving things forward. And, as I said earlier, the three other parties gave some specific commitments. The Conservative Party, while they acknowledged our concerns are important and that they would meet and work together and partner with us to work on them, they did not commit to any specific action uh, to move things uh, forward. Um, with respect to the details, some of the more specifics, uh, we asked uh, all the parties uh, to commit that if elected that they would uh, enact uh, promptly the next accessibility standard that we wanted developed, uh, the, that is to say the built environment accessibility standard. The three um, parties, the Liberals, New Democrats, and Greens, uh, all agreed that they would using various terminology. Uh, and the Conservatives did not. We said we also want to work with the next government on developing other accessibility standards to address other areas that we don't think have yet been addressed under this Act and need to be tackled. Those three parties, Liberals, New Democrats, and Greens, each in varying wording committed to work with us on that. Uh, the uh, uh, Conservatives made no specific commitment, but they did uh, generally say they would work with us on all our areas uh, of concern. Um, uh, we asked the parties uh, to commit um, to one thing that we consider especially important, not to diminish the significance of others, but we wanted the parties to commit that no tax dollars would be used ever again to create new barriers against us, whether in buildings uh, or in uh, technology or other things that the government spends money on. Last uh, summer, the McGinty government, to their credit, in their 10-year infrastructure plan, did include commitments on building accessibility, uh, and we've commended them for that as progress. The three uh, uh, parties, the Liberals, New Democrats, and Greens, each in varying degrees addressed our concern for a commitment of, no, of tax dollars not being spent uh, to create new, barrier, uh, new barriers. Uh, the, uh, Conservatives made no commitment whatsoever in any form to ensure that tax dollars are not used in the future uh, to create new barriers against us. An um, important area for us in achieving full accessibility is not just that the government makes new accessibility laws, but that they effectively enforce them. During the eight years of the Harris government, Premier Harris had promised us in 1995 an accessibility law. He passed one in 2001 called the Ontarians with Disabilities Act 2001. It was weak, it was too limited, and it was utterly unenforceable in our view. 
We then uh, entered the 2003 election making it as a priority, not only that we get a good new law, but that it have effective enforcement. We asked the three parties in this election to make specific commitments on effective enforcement of the Disabilities Act uh, in the next four years. The Liberals, New Democrats, and Greens, to varying degrees, all echoed the need for effective enforcement and gave to varying degrees commitments on what they would do some uh, very general and some more specific. You'll see that uh, on the chart. In contrast, other than committing generally to work with us on our concerns, the Progressive Conservative Party did not acknowledge uh, or commit to the effective enforcement of the Disabilities Act. Um, we asked the parties uh, to um, commit uh, to something that we also have learned is very important over the past eight years. We believe that while the government has worked in good faith on accessibility, it needs to seriously re-engineer the way accessibility is dealt with in the Ontario Public Service. It shouldn't be dealt with in isolated silos. And this is echoed by the 2010 Independent Review Report of Charles Beer, appointed by the government uh, itself. So we asked the the, each of the parties to make commitments to specific action on re-engineering the way the public service uh, delivers accessibility. By the way, all of these commitments are affordable. None of these are huge price tag issues. Uh, we, we know the financial situation the government's in, and we're aware of that. Um, the Liberals, New Democrats, uh, and the Greens, each in varying terms, made some commitments on, uh, towards the goal of re-engineering the way accessibility is dealt with uh, or delivered uh, by the public service. The Conservative Party made no specific commitment at all. In the 2007 election, we thought it was necessary for the next government, this was four years ago, to review all provincial laws, statutes and regulations, to find out if there are any barriers in them, and if there are, to fix them. We asked the three major parties uh, in 07 to, make, to commit to do that. The three leaders back then, Dalton McGuinty, John Tory and Howard Hampton, each agreed that if elected, they would. The McGuinty government has started that process, but we believe needs to speed it up. And we sought specific commitments to that end. You will see that the letters from the Liberals, New Democrats, and, uh, and Greens each make commitments aimed at completing the uh, task uh, of achieving a full review of all Ontario laws. Uh, to achieve full accessibility. The Conservative Party, although in 2007 committed to do such a review if elected then, make no commitments specifically on that uh, in their letter to us this time around. We asked uh, uh, a major concern for us as well has been ensuring that elections are fully accessible to people with disabilities, that voters with disabilities not continue to face too many barriers when trying to vote. More about that in a few minutes. We uh, asked the parties to make specific commitments on this. In 2007, they each did. In 2011, there are commitments, some vague, um, some more specific, uh, from the Liberals, uh, New Democrats, and Greens. But in contrast, the Conservatives make no commitments at all. One of the specific things I will focus on on that for score is that last year there was an election reform bill in the House, Bill 231. Uh, we thought it was way too weak. We urged amendments to strengthen it. The government adopted some, but not most, of our proposals. To their credit, the New Democrats and the Conservatives put forward many more proposals, for example, that would have sped up the adoption of Internet and telephone voting, which would be great for folks with disabilities and, frankly, everybody else. The government didn't move anywhere near as far on that as we thought they should, but the Liberal, uh, probably the New Democrats and Conservatives were prepared to. Of interest, we asked in our letter to the parties that they adopt the amendments that the opposition put forward to Bill 231. Um, and uh, the, uh, the government, the Liberals, don't make that commitment, though they do undertake generally to work with us on more progress on accessible municipal and provincial elections. The NDP does commit to, uh, if elected, enact the substance or substantive issues that were addressed in their amendments. The Conservatives, uh, in their letter, do not commit 
that if elected, they would pass the amendments that they themselves put forward at our request last year in standing committee in this building uh, to achieve fully accessible elections. In 2007, we asked all the parties to commit to a specific strategy to promote public education on accessibility. We wanted kids in school taught about this. We wanted professionals like architects, lawyers, social workers, teachers taught about this. The uh, three parties made commitments on this back in 2007. We have not got any indication of specific progress from the government on this, though we have asked. So we asked again this time around, among other things. You'll see it's in the documents available. The government, uh, the Liberals, uh, have generally committed that they stand by their prior commitments, so we take that as meaning that what they promised before is still uh, uh, a commitment for us to pursue. Uh, the New Democrats uh, and, the, uh, and the Greens uh, address this area generally in their letters, uh, uh, more generally, and again, you'll see the specifics uh, in their letters. Um, the Conservatives, though in 2007 were prepared to commit to action on this front, uh, don't make any specific commitments at all. Just again, a commitment to generally work with us on our issues they consider important. Now the uh, second last area where we sought commitments uh, was on the Human Rights Commission. You'll know that that is an issue in this election for reasons apart from our concerns. We were very concerned in 2006 when the Liberal government privatized the enforcement of human rights and took away the public enforcement role largely from the uh, Ontario Human Rights Commission. Uh, we wanted that restored. Um, the Liberals uh, make no commitment on that, just noting there's an independent review uh, going on. Uh, frankly, the commitments of the uh, other parties on that are relatively, uh, this is the area where I would say across the board commitments, even where we got any, are extremely thin. Uh, they are the thinnest there are, uh, of, of all of them. And the final area was that we asked the parties to continue to work with us uh, as they have in the past. Um, and all parties agreed to that, for which we're appreciative. Well, what are we going to do about it? Let me take just a couple of minutes to talk about what our plans are. Uh, we've got a track record of raising these issues in uh, provincial elections and in by-elections. We, we do not tell people who to vote for or who to vote against. We do several things, and we're going to do it again. The first thing is that we try to make these uh, positions and platform, posi uh, excuse me, these platform positions publicly available to voters, voters with disabilities, their friends, their families, and everybody who's going to get a disability later in life. In other words, everybody. And we urge them to let others know about these issues, to raise them with the candidates, uh, and to also consider these issues as they decide uh, on uh, what they're going to do on election day. We are going to be doing that again. We do it at the grassroots level by inviting people and encouraging people to go to all candidates' debates, write op-eds for the paper, uh, call in to call-in shows, to raise this issue where we don't have a budget for uh, fancy TV ads, to raise these issues using what is our true strength, which is human beings, voters, raising these issues with each other. We've done it before, we've done it effectively, and we'll do it again. But as well, um, emphasizing that we do not campaign for or against any party, we do campaign for an issue. And in that regard, if there is a party whose commitments are substantially weaker, we urge them during the campaign to strengthen them. And therefore today, as I make these public, these commitments public, as I reviewed, we do call on the Progressive Conservative Party to rethink their position, to look at the commitments of the other parties, and to meet them or beat them. We urge them to reconsider and to reissue their, or to issue a revised platform that has specifics in it. We look forward to working with them. We, in fact, have been invited to meet with their campaign team, uh, independent of the events this morning. No one knew what was going to be in the packages released this morning. And we're prepared to meet with any campaign team, with any party, with any uh, organization at any time. Uh, uh, in order to share our concerns and encourage uh, our, uh, uh, that we be, uh, that their platforms reflect the kinds of issues that voters with disabilities and their friends and families uh, need. 
So that's going to be another major focus of our concerns. We would be happiest if in this election all parties committed, for example, that they will not cut back on a single thing that's been gained so far. We would like that to be an issue that is off the table. And uh, we will work, uh, continue to work uh, towards that goal. Our final area of activity in this election um, is going to be to continue our campaign, which has been going on for well over a decade, of trying to achieve a fully accessible election. We have been involved in election after election and in between in trying to remove the barriers that people with disabilities face when they try to vote. Barriers in, when all candidates' debates are convened at an inaccessible location, barriers if a polling station is located in an inaccessible location, and barriers that continue to face voters like me, who because of our vision loss or other disability, cannot privately and independently mark our own ballot. Now we've had some progress. Bill 231, while inadequate in our view, did include partial victories for us. Uh, it includes Elections Ontario being obliged to study new methods of voting like telephone and internet voting. We'd like to see that sped up. Excuse me. We would like this to be the last election, the last election in which um, uh, voters do not have access to uh, something like telephone or internet voting. Not only voters with disabilities, but all voters. But as well, uh, we've seen amendments to strengthen requirements for accessible polling stations. We hope that Elections Ontario's, Election Ontario's unfortunate history in the past of not always having fully accessible polling stations will be a thing of the past. Elections Ontario, under the new legislation, has taken some new commendable steps in that regard, and we encourage them to keep on it. Similarly, uh, we have been successful uh, through the Bill 231 fight to get the uh, government to approve the acquisition by Elections Ontario of a new accessible voting machines where people with disabilities like mine uh, can mark their vote independently. Unfortunately, there's only going to be 144 of those machines in the entire province, one in each riding for sure, and in some ridings uh, there'll be more than one. Now, we think that people with disabilities should be able to vote uh, with the same access that people without disabilities. They shouldn't have to go all the way across their riding, which in some ridings is quite a distance, just to be able to mark their ballot without having somebody else mark it for them, hoping that that other person uh, gets it right, keeps it private, uh, and doesn't spoil the ballot by accident. Um, I will tell you as a point of comparison that Ontario continues to lag behind in this area. Last year I met with the clerk responsible for elections in Cook County, that's Chicago in the greater Chicago area. In the city of Chicago itself, population of memory serves about 3 million. There are 2,500 accessible voting machines. In Cook County, pop, that's the greater Chicago area, population of 6,000, or pardon me, of, of, I don't know, probably 5 or 6 million, I can't remember. There are 6,000 accessible voting machines. For all of the huge territory of Ontario, 11 million people, 144. The government, when they brought Bill 231 in, said these machines are way too expensive. They're, they're $10,000 each. Sometimes they said $15,000 when uh, installed uh, and training is done. The figure we got yesterday from Elections Ontario is they paid about 6000 for each. Now, we think that you don't need to buy one for each polling station, that Internet voting or telephone voting would be a fix a cheaper and more effective way of providing accessible voting and there is other technology rather than using those more expensive machines that could be used in each polling station. We hope that this election will be the last election uh, where uh, the opportunities for private independent voting by people with disabilities like mine uh, um, is, is, uh, is only something we can do in one or two places in an entire riding. Let me conclude with two thoughts. The first is this. We believe, as I said before, that it's not too late for any party to look at the commitments of the other parties and strengthen theirs. Our, uh, our agenda for change in, uh, is in our June, uh, July 17th letter, and while we've got some important ingredients in what's been committed, we will meet with the next government, whoever they are, table our July 15th letter, and urge them to act on all the recommendations we've provided, whether they promised them explicitly now or not. 
we commend those parties and those politicians individually within their parties that have supported our issue. And we urge in a nonpartisan way uh, uh, the Conservative Party to, as I said, meet or beat the commitments of the other parties. There's no reason why anyone uh, running for office can't commit that they won't cut back on the gains we've made. There's no reason why anyone running to lead our province and govern our province can't commit that our tax dollars will never be used to create another barrier against people with disabilities. My other concluding remark is this. Um, uh, in, if, if you follow election coverage, and believe me, we do, uh, the po some of the pundits and some of the coverage tends to focus on two or three issues. And the two or three issues crystallize right around now. The fact is, there are many more issues that concern voters. Ours are among the many. And we hope that the pundits and those are, uh, deciding what spaces to be uh, uh, allocated for coverage will be broadened uh, to ensure the full range of issues are covered, including ours. The accessibility issue is not the only disability issue. It's the one I'm here to talk about today. But it's an important one. We urge uh, those who are going to be covering this election to ask politicians why they took the positions in the letters you see here today, and if their letters are weak in any way, why they don't commit to more. We look forward to your questions, and we thank you for, uh, for coming today. If there are any questions. Any questions? I don't see any hands. No questions? No hands. OK. Well, thank you all very much. And if anybody has any questions, they can certainly contact us, and we're happy to uh, provide further feedback.